the power of a mastermind, the power of this like hive mind is that you then get to leverage everybody else's research capacity and then bounce ideas off of them. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of the Real Estate Investors Club podcast. I have the privilege of having with me today none other than my office mate, Axel. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me on the show today. <laughs> so we wanted to talk a little bit about something that we're starting up in January. We're going to be starting a couple of mastermind groups. And um, I wanted to just chat with you about the motivations that we had behind doing this. And I know for me, um, part of it is we've gotten so much out of sharing this office together and out of just being surrounded on a regular basis with somebody else who does real estate, bounce ideas around, uh, share contacts, you know, have conversations like that. And that's part of the motivation that we have behind trying to open up this resource to other people who are trying to make it in our industry. What do you have to say about that? I couldn't agree more. And I just want to share with everyone how I ended up in your office is that a year and a half ago, I was working from home and I kind of got very unproductive. And one afternoon I reached out and said, Terry, I can't be home anymore. I was kind of crying, but now I'm okay. And now I'm okay to say it. And I called you and said, Do you know, anybody who's got office space, I just want to get out of the house for a little bit. And you're like, yeah, me come tomorrow. And then it's been a year and a half and I'm still here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but getting back to, you know, the really great thing about having a group of people that you can bounce ideas off of. And, you know, like I think real estate, like being a, a small entrepreneur can be a really lonely journey sometimes. And, you know, especially when you're starting out and the people around you are not other investors. They're not people who have experience in the industry. And so like you go to, you know, family dinner or you go out with your buddies and what comes back is, you know, uncle so-and-so or so and Bob's so-and-so's brother-in-law who once upon a time tried to buy a triplex and had a bad experience. And that that ends up being the sounding board for your ideas as you're trying to level yourself up. And, you know, I certainly went through that. Axel, I'm, I'm sure you went through some version of that. Um, yeah. um, and so again, I want to say like, we want to help um, some people get out of that cycle and build themselves a proper network of people who are at their level of peers who can move up. So tell me a little bit, what uh, what's the purpose of joining a mastermind? <laughs> It's multiple fold. And I'm actually going to go back to the original question that you asked because I realized that I didn't fully answer it. And it's the perfect springboard to answer this one. I was so happy to be able to join and come to this office because it got me out of the house. But most importantly, it got me in an environment that is highly motivating because the two of us are kind of doing the same thing. We just kind of have like different investment models for the type of properties that we do. But that's like, that's a tiny difference. Where we benefited, or at least where I benefited, I'm not going to speak for you, is just that there is someone kind of like me, more or less at the same spot, who's doing the same thing, that we can bounce idea and say, hey, that's the situation that I'm in. What did you do when you were there? What about this? How would you approach this situation? What should I tell her? And it's been not only like, I, I like the, the soundboard where we say something and we, we get something back, uh, but it's also that bouncing ideas, sharing perspective. And you and I have had our conflicts and our different point of views. And I always feel it's been very productive because most importantly, it's been motivating. And for me, that's the key part into all of this, because let's be honest with everybody who's listening. What we're doing is sometimes very lonely. And when you're literally alone in, in an office at your house, at least on me, I, I was kind of going crazy. And coming here, not only give me, I don't want to say give me purpose again. I, I knew what my purpose was, but it gave me a lot more clarity because there is someone kind of like me doing the same thing. And the mirror has been extremely beneficial because there's someone 
to talk to and to confirm and to sometimes say, I think you're going in the wrong direction mm-hmm. and it's been super productive. So that was going back to your, or your original question. Now going back to masterminds, yeah, we, we had said, Hey, we've had other people come to this office. And after two hours, they're like, this is great. The dynamic that you have, your door is open. You guys ask questions, you help each other, you share contacts, you share articles you've read and how this could impact the real estate market. And, you know, you and I got a a, a little closer because we talk about life in general and we talk about going to the gym and we talk about our families and we talk about our life struggles. And it's been the accountability part where I know you've helped me with a lot of stuff about, yeah, but Excel, like two months ago, you said you were going to do it. And where is it now? And I was like, you're right. Thank you for reminding me and kind of putting it in my face. So those are just some of the elements where the parallel between coming at the office and choosing to be in a group where people hold you accountable, you get to network with them and share contacts for what we're doing in real estate investing is absolutely key. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about bridging the gap because, you know, we uh, decided to have two masterminds and I want to talk today about our GoPro formula. And, you know, I think in our coaching practices, in, you know, the podcasting and the networking events that we do, we see that there's a specific need and there's a specific jump that people need to make from what we call, you know, amateur landlord to professional small time landlord. And what is that jump? It's the jump from either you don't yet own an investment or you own a condo or a triplex and you kind of don't know what the next step is and you don't Mm -hmm. have the support systems around you to level up to the next level. And like, what are those support systems? So you know, we mentioned kind of accountability and peer group and all of these different things. But if I had to map it out, I would say there's maybe four or five things that separate the small time amateur from the small time pro. And they are peer group, the network, the contact list, the accountability. And then definitely when you're trying to, you know, grow into anything, it having that growth mindset is partly about accountability. And it's also partly about being willing to maybe ask broader questions about where you are in your life. And, you know, like I like to make this parallel with, um, you know, being on the court, right. Sports parallels and the way you play when you're on the court, the way you play when you're doing real estate is so tied to what happens off the court, what happens in your personal life, what happens with your sleep, your nutrition, your emotions, your, your, your like fitness level, like all, All these other decisions that we make in our lives, our psychological health, our our spiritual well-being, like all of those things come into how we play when we're on the court. And, you know, in in terms of creating the GoPro group, these are the kind of things that we want to help our members get a handle on in order to, in a very intentional way, move up from this kind of like, I know I want to do something in real estate. I've maybe taken one or two steps, but like, how do I get bigger? So th- that's a really good point. And as you said, both you and I, through our, our practice, have seen and have helped people who, who who started with a condo. Sometimes we're even accidental landlords. Um, they start with a condo or they bought a duplex, a triplex. And then, you know, it's been maybe a, a year or two and it's kind of stagnating and they don't really know what to do. They, but they, they showed initiative and they took the first steps to move forward, which usually is just a first transaction. Once that's completed, you think you're finished, but you're really just getting started. And so uh, to go back to your question in terms of like the, the, the GoPro, it's one thing to own two condos and manage them or to have a triplex and, and, and to grow and to scale to, let's say, be managing a 30 unit, a 50, 100 unit portfolio and being a full time real estate investor. And there is a transition that needs to be done. And not only is it professional and how you organize that business, because whether you own just a triplex, a condo or a, a 24 unit, it's a business and it needs to, to be treated like a business. You need to have procedures. You need to have systems. You need to have a group. You need to have a team and so on and so forth because no one does a transaction on their own. Minimum, you need a banker and a notary. Um, and so making that switch is not all that simple. And the best way to do this is actually 
what, what we like to call to go through the accelerated learning of seeing how other experienced people did it. So we don't make those mistakes ourselves and we learn faster because we benefit from their experience. Have you really been listening to the episode or has your monkey mind been taking you off in one direction or another? Our mental habits can be our biggest assets or our biggest liabilities as we pursue certain goals. For me, the biggest performance gains have always come from training my mind. In my book, Mindful Landlord, I talk about how you can train your mind and how you can apply some of these strategies to your journey in the real estate field. The book is available on Amazon and also on its website, mindfullandlord.com. And now I'll stop evangelizing for the power of mental training and let you get back to the show. Uh, I totally agree with that. I, I, I wonder also, you know, in terms of market intelligence, right? Like I, I know we have so many off camera conversations here and, um, you know, us with our business models, I have a lot of visibility into the rental world. Um, and the, you know, rental tent, like the, when I say rental world, it's not just let me fill my units. It's also what's going on with the towel. It's going to have more visibility into construction and development, um, that kind of stuff. And so, you know, anecdotally, we have great information, but also in terms of our reading interests, because definitely when I'm doing research, um, you know, I tend to read a bunch of, of macroeconomic stuff, but the podcasts and the the intel that I'm doing is what, as it relates to my specific biz, building business model. And so the bigger your network is of industry professionals, the better type of intelligence you're able to gather just based on those informal conversations where like Axel has, you know, in two minutes giving me the digest of his last week of reading. And we get that, you know, every lunchtime on at mon on Monday morning. But the power of a mastermind, the power of this like hive mind is that you then get to leverage everybody else's research capacity and then bounce ideas off of them. So, you know, definitely like market intelligence, um, you know, if it comes from me and Excel who are going to be running the group, or if it comes from the input of various other members of the group, like I'm very excited about that aspect. Yeah. And, you know, I'm glad you're bringing up this point because, you know, we like to call it market intelligence, but basically, as you said, like both, both of us like to read and we like to read some fairly credible um, sources. And it's, it's funny how we kind of complement each other on the, the type of topics um, and I was going to say in, in terms of ge geography, in terms of economics, and we both have an attraction for macroeconomics because it has such an impact on our daily lives. And uh, we've noticed that a lot of people tend to forget that and the importance that it has obviously on the real estate market. So it's, it's fun for, at least for me, it's fun to be able to have these conversations with you. And both of us have always been super excited to share it with other people. So I know that whoever chooses to join the group is actually going to get a fair share of, as you said, concentrates of what we've digested in terms of reading and that is worth sharing because it's important for them and not everyone makes that effort. And I hope that that's one of the habits that we can communicate to people to start taking more and more. We always say, the first investment you make in real estate is in yourself, is in your education. You want to go buy a $500,000 building? Great. Take the first 10K for you to learn how to do that transaction, for you to learn how to operate that building, how to finance it, how to do renovations so that you can actually build a business on that first transaction. Yeah. And, you know, if I can sort of riff off of what you're saying, like, you know, um, there's a lot of the, the one of the, the kind of the, the slogans that people often say is invest in yourself. The other one is you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. And that's Jim Rohn who said that quote. It's really a comment about peer group. And, you know, I know yeah. I love to talk about uncle so-and-so or like the brother-in-law who like tried to dance. Um, one of the major challenges that you face when you're trying to level up whatever you're doing, and it's true for real estate, it's true for anything else. If you have a peer group that's operating down here, like kind of at a, you know, a lower level, if you want to try to kick yourself up to a higher level, you need to be surrounding yourself with people who at least have similar ap uh, aspirations as you, because that's going to like move you in the direction that you want to go in. And being intentional about building that peer group, building that network uh, is just going to open the door uh, in your mind as to what's possible for you. And, you know, yeah. I think that's another thing that's so crucial about what you surround yourself with. And like, like, let's be honest, it's really difficult. You know, like we have families, we have spouses, we have 
kids and like, you know, how much time do you have when you're got your, you know, your head in the, in the, in the grind to get things done, to really just take that time out of your day and be like, okay, I am now intentionally going to surround myself with like-minded individuals who have similar ambitions. Like, sure. That's like a great slogan to say, but concretely go do that tomorrow, Axel, how are you going to do that? And, you know, I'm definitely excited that the, the mastermind is going to provide that kind of environment for us and for the people who end up joining, because at least, you know, twice a month, you're going to be surrounded by those peers who have that similar set of goals to you and who, um, you're going to be able to see as your peer group in this particular environment, which will help you move forward at a rate that you wouldn't have been able to do on your own. Yeah. And so, okay, I'm glad that you started with that quote of you're the average of the five people you hang out the most with, because a while ago, when I took this seriously, there's people that I've cut from my life. There's people that I realized that I actually spent time with that really I shouldn't. And, and then there's people that I intentionally decided to hang out more around. And I am very proud to say that you've raised my average. I'm serious. I'm happy to have come here because you're, Aww. you were one of the people that I thought, <laughs> no, seriously, I'm not, uh, you know, I just thought that it's, it's, it's good to hang out with people like Terry. At least it was for me. It's different for everybody and they can make their own conclusions. For me, it was very positive to be around you. Now, the other thing is that you, you just said, how do we find people like that? And that's a hard thing because smart people, they don't have a sign on the metro that says, I'm smart, hang out with me. So you have to go intentionally, and I insist on the word intentionally, choose to go put yourself in a group where all of a sudden you kind of feel like the dumbest one in the room or, or being very average because it means you're in a fairly smart room. And you want to be pulled up. Now, a mistake I've made in the past, I have, it fills my bucket to want to give back to the world because I feel like I was very um, fortunate to receive a lot in my life. So I always want to help everyone. And I realized at some point that I spent so much time helping everyone, but that no one was really helping me. And I don't, it's not that I don't want to do this anymore. I'm still as generous. It's just that I want to help in another way. And now I want to help by giving the opportunity for people to be with us if they're intentional and if they bring something to the table. And kind of to finish this, today I had a really good conversation with a gentleman who's interested in real estate. And but he's like, but you know, I I don't have I don't have properties yet. And yet he went through an incubator. He's a fabulous entrepreneur. And just listening to his path, it made me realize of how much transferable knowledge and energy there is between an entrepreneur who turned an idea into a very successful startup to being a real estate entrepreneur. And, and I hope eventually maybe that, that person joins our group because we benefit from it even though his experience is different because he comes from a different perspective and we can learn from one another. And overall, and I'm just thinking of this person because it's a fresh conversation from this morning, any room this person walks in, he raises the average. So for those who are listening, thinking, how can I meet people and how can I be around individuals that are going to put me up? The first thing is that you have to be intentional about what you're trying to do. You have to recognize that you want to put yourself in the situation because I can name you other ways to do this, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I want to uh, just, you know, pull on the thread of intentionality a little bit and transfer that over into something that's a bit similar, which is uh, like networking. Right. And, you know, again, we're going to start with another slogan, like your network is your net worth. Oh, and boy, you're full of quotes today. I like it. Estate, may, being able to make that phone call that, you know, call a friend lifeline. I am. Oh, I'm just a fortune cookie, Axel. <laughs> it's the holidays. It's all the fortune cookie moment. <laughs> um, but, you know, the the fact that you're able to make that million dollar phone call. And maybe it's the phone call that like prevents you from making a million dollar mistake. But the, the value of that network of those contacts uh, who will have the right advice for you, who are, you know, in, in construction, who are going to be able to come through, show up, do things on time, um, you know, and how do you, you intentionally build that network in a way that protects you and that makes your business as profitable as possible? 
you know, when you're talking about the benefits of being part of a real estate community, being part of a mastermind, the power of the hive mind to select and exchange those contacts, to make the introductions and to make sure that those professionals who, because they're very good, are very uh, solicited, right? They have a big workload. And the fact that like, I'm able to make an intro, you're able to make an intro, or somebody's able to make an intro means that that professional is going to pick up the phone and, and take that call. Whereas they might not necessarily do that, you know? And again, we're talking about like, we have so much off camera stuff. It's tough to keep up with it. But you know, like this morning, I had a friend who had a question that I knew you were, would be able to answer. And I was like, you know, Axel, please, he's going to call you, just pick up the phone and like give him 15 minutes of your time. And like that happened and that is worth gold. Right. And that's the kind of thing that you get from your net. And you know that like, I don't have the knowledge necessarily to answer that question, but I certainly know who does. And I'm going to give you his number. Right. Like that yeah. is, that's just worth so much. And I would even add another layer on top of that. And I forget the exact quote, but it's like the se the 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 links of seven people. We know everyone on the planet linked. We're all linked to each other through seven times, right? I forget what it is. Maybe you remember and stuff. And to go back to what you said in terms of six, okay, it's there's six a, degrees of separation. Thank you. Six degrees of separation. So what I want to illustrate with this is that we know what we know, and we can solve the problems that we know where we know the solution. And both you and I have had times where we didn't know what to do, but as we, as, as you said, Hey, call this guy, he'll be able to give you the answer. And the best part of this is that if you call this guy coming from me and he doesn't know the answer, he'll give you somebody else who does. And to me, it really illustrates two things is that we don't need to know everything. We just need to know people who know. And the second thing is, going back to the network, why do people still want to hang out with you after you've met them? Because there is something about you that draws them in. And usually this thing is building value. And when you go to networking events thinking, I want to talk to everyone to see what they can do for me, you don't really end up having meaningful conversations. The meaningful conversations come when you go to an event or you're in a group or in a situation and then you start with how can i help you it's unbelievable the difference that it makes by how much value you build for other people and then how more likely you are to stay in contact so when you may not talk to them for two months but one day you have a situation you pick up the phone and say hey remember we me we talked about this you're the guy that builds value for them so instantly they'll do whatever they can to help you so it goes back to the laws of, of separate, the six degrees of separation combined with how do I build value for others so we want to, so we mutually want to stay in touch and, and, and help each other. So yeah, your, your network is your net worth. I mean, it couldn't be more true than today. Yeah. And uh, give her, I got another quote for you on that subject. Givers gain. <laughs> We're we're kind of getting to uh, towards the end of the time um, for this interview. I want to, you know, state to everybody listening that um, we're going to be dropping the link to the application form for the mastermind in the show notes of this show. Um, Axel, you got anything else you want to tell our listeners? I know that we're like really excited to get going on this and you know, um, there is an application process, so we're not just accepting everybody. And I think the last thing that you said, Axel, about givers gain and, you know, really looking for people who obviously want to learn, want to grow, but who also come in with that mindset of, I want to see what kind of value I can create for other people. And if that's just, you know, being positive and caring, because that's what you have to contribute, like that's already a whole lot because how much of yeah. the energy, like the energy that you bring to something, the effort that you bring to something is just worth so much. So I think uh, that, mm -hmm. that was kind of like the last thing I had to say about that. Did I, what did I forget? No, you didn't forget anything. It, it just reminded me of, of another quote, which is that life in the long run usually tends to give to, to the givers and takes from the takers. So people have to choose intentionally what side they want to be on. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, Axel, thank you so much for spending this time with me. We get to have so many great conversations off camera in the office. It's fun to be able to, uh, you know, every so often share some of those conversations with our audiences. I know that's something that both of us like to do respectively on our own shows. Guys, if you uh, haven't yet had a chance to go over and check out Axel's show, uh, The Very Real Estate Effect, um, go ahead. We're going to drop that uh, link in the show notes as well. Uh, Axel is the other you know, Anglophone real estate podcast in Montreal. So if you haven't had a chance to check out his show, that's going to definitely add to whatever you're learning on this show. We have a slightly different perspective on things, different business models, different guests. Um, and uh, you yeah, if you found this episode constructive, useful, inspiring. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> Please uh, go ahead and share this. Uh, send it to a friend who, for whom it might be constructive. And if you're looking for some accountability and for, to level up what you're doing in real estate this year in 2024, go ahead and fill out an application to the mastermind. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening.